This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we've got us a freezer here that is tripping the oil pressure safety. This is a pretty good sized warehouse. It's been tripping randomly, sometimes once every week or two. Everything was checked. They had a solenoids holding. Pressure differential was good. Might as well go ahead and yank this thing open. It's either it's full or we're low. I'm not seeing swashing around at all. Now, what can cause that is if it was short cycling the compressor, it'll pump the oil right out of itself. Now, do we have potentially some sort of short cycling issue going on? Do we have a pressure switch that's acting stupid? I thought they said they changed the defrost clock. Maybe it was on the other one. This one says it's seven o'clock, it's 840 something. It's possible that it's okay. Let's go and mark the clock here, which I don't have my pin on me, which is typical. Screw it, we'll just mark it with the scratch. There we go. Crankcase heater's working. What's going on that we're missing? Let's check our suction pressure and see if it's pumped down still. And you know I love my analog gauges for pressure switches. Haven't seen a digital set that is fast enough. And our suction pressure is up to 35. So, the question is, was the unit running and then it tripped out and then it shut down and obviously it couldn't continue to run because it protected the compressor, it shut off. I mean, it's obviously not as high as it could be. I don't know if we're gonna get straight answers, but it sure looks awfully low. Um, this is a Centronic, which like I said, they have a new switch on there. And you got the Centronic there. We could have a, de a defective Centronic, but like I said, the oil level looks low to me. I'll be honest with you guys, sometimes I like to go through and search oil issues, because this is a uh, larger system and it's been looked at and uh, previous trip it had at least a quarter inch sight glass of oil the sight glass refrigerant sight glass was full and now that the switch had been changed you know i wanted to think you know a reminder of some of the things that it could be um, you could have an accumulator issue there it could be possibly not letting the oil return it could have a leap hole that's plugged up it could be low on charge it could have a superheat issue causing low velocity it could have you know possibility of migration back but we have a solenoid to protect it from that we have a crankcase heater that appears to be working currently that should protect the migration there as far as uh, you know uh, accumulating in the compressor so i mean i'm kind of going through here and i'm, I'm wondering if the uh the accumulator is possibly trapping and i've had that in heat pumps you got potential of uh, electrical issues just a lot of things that you may not think of and it's never a bad idea um contracting business is the website i'm on they've got some really good articles and stuff all it needs is eight to nine psi pressure so we're gonna kick it on i don't want to add oil immediately i mean i'm gonna watch it and that way i don't want to put oil in it just to yank it back out Crank crankcase due to blow by from the piston rings yeah that's true too i mean we just got a bunch of things it could possibly be yep there's our suction pressure 35 okay 35 ish yep 35 on the money six on that one close enough this one's actually more accurate that jb gauge is pretty nice they're both made in America. Yellow Jack and JB, both good quality companies. So now we are able to monitor and see where our suction's at. It's going to tell us what our oil is. So if it's completely zero, obviously we're going to stop it right away. Like I said, you got to watch, make sure that's not completely full. Cause an opposite. But like I said, the guy uh, ended up checking it. It was at a quarter. There we go. Heard a click. We could have a little pressure switch rapid cycling the system. I mean, that's always a possibility. Let's see if the solenoid's got power. Put our amp draw solenoid does not have power see that there's no display on the amp draw that magnetic waves from the solenoid will trigger it so jump back to voltage okay and we have no voltage open there let's go to between voltage or between ground and one of the terminals i have 120 ish are we in the defrost i don't think we're in a defrost yet it has tracked the copper has moved away from the scratch so the clock is moving 
So why are we not running? Maybe I didn't push hard enough. All right, whatever. Okay, look at our discharge here on our uh, oil. It's definitely low. Yeah, the oil level, you can see it right there. So we are in the sight glass, but we are kind of bouncing all over. Suction, 15. got some oil in there. It's not completely bone dry, but you did see how she was acting stupid. 18. 18 minus 70. Let's just say it's 48. But look how my oil is bouncing around. That's not normal. Usually it's pretty steady. At least every time I've seen it, it's always been pretty steady. I don't know if he checked the oil screen. I'm going to check with the other guys, see if he's checked that. Oil is he said the quarter area, that's about where we're at. I'm wondering if we had a little bit of oil. I'd, I'd like to check that screen though. I'm gonna check with that guy real quick. So I talked to the other guy, gave me some ideas of things to check. We are shutting off beautiful. Like right now, we're at five PSA. It's in defrost this time. I've been in cycling it on and off at the uh, switch here at our actual toggle switch. So let's kick it back out again. You watch it come up. Right on about 15. I mean, that's a little hot, uh, lower than what we normally go with, but normally go somewhere around 20. Uh, this is 404A. So let's do a regular pump down this time because I don't want to build a bunch of heat up on my coil. That contactor, although I change it, there's a possibility. I mean, the amp draw on that uh, coil is only 0.2 amps. Watch this thing shut down again. I'm going to do a pump down. I have to pump it down. Suction pressure is going to drop, and so is the oil pressure. You should be able to see both of those. And cut out now. Boom, instantly shut down. I'm thinking of cleaning that screen just in case. When this first came on, that oil came up, and it was hanging, I think, 45-50-ish area, and it didn't build up all the way. Now, that could have been just, you know, hadn't ran for a day. The guy did not reset it for a reason. My oil level still is at the very, very bottom. One more time here. On right around 15. Going down here to the contactor because if the contactor's kicking on and off, or if the windings on the protection circuit or the windings actually in the compressor, we're kicking it out. You can have some short cycling there. We're at point, point 0.1, hell no amperage now. That's kind of nice. If you're real close to that coil there. My whole thing is we've got to do something because it's doing it again and again. So we've got to eliminate more things. Like I said, it had already placed the Centronic switch and that looks like the original cable. I'm not getting, not getting any cut out at all. 20 pound suction. Yeah, we're probably getting a little bit of flood back there, but the accumulator's catching it. Because, I mean, we just cycled it on and off. We check superheat. See a little bit of flutter. But, I mean, all it needs is 9 PSI. So, I mean, something had to cause that thing to drop below 9. We could have a failure on the pump. I've never had one fail on me yet. So, I've never had to change one. Never, never had that. So, that's news to me. My glass is completely full. That uh, eliminates possibly any restrictions in the filter dryer. Let's go ahead and pump this turkey down. And then we'll isolate the compressor and then we'll check that screen. That's a nice, that's gonna be a nice little mess. Okay, let's go ahead and kill power. Let's isolate this compressor just as extra precautions. I don't want no pressure on it. I'm pretty sure I went with this kit from Harbor Freight because you know it's awesome for the money. I needed bigger, bigger ratchets. Hey, and this is uh SAE all the way up to an inch and a half. So this gives me, I think inch is what that thing is. So we got that. Let's go here. Inch and three-eighths, that's what we needed. 
we don't want the potential say say something goes wrong and i can't get the compressor can't get it back together quickly because you know there's pressure in there if you keep it in a positive pressure you can get it back together and i have to dink but if something goes wrong and you can't get it back together i don't want it open to the system to where it could backtrack into the suction line things like that okay there's that Look at that oil. Got some oil issues right there. Why is there that much oil on the suction? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's going on there? Why is that there like that? All right, well, we're gonna snug that back up. We're gonna leave it just to where. That's, that right there is a clue, buddy. That is a clue. This is gonna make a mess. This is gonna be good video here. I can't get a pan really, so to speak, under there very easily. I've got a big pan back here I could use, but I don't, I don't, a pie pan would be nice, but I don't do this that often to have it with me every time. Yeah, we're going to make a mess. Stupid heater. There we go. There, that's just out of my way better than what it was. Yeah, it's got some there, but since that suction's okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I mean, our gauge there would pick it up. And yeah, we're still bled out over there. Oh boy, here we go. Not gonna be fun. Ready? And go. Oh God. There's the screen. Put the thing back over top of it. Ew, the screen does have some nasty sh crap on it. Okay, what I did is I, well, thought I had it. I screwed the cap back in partially. Here is the, the uh, spring. There is the filter screen. And it does have some crud on it definitely has some crud on it look at that there's some chunks of ch crap on that there's definitely some crappy chunks on that that is definitely some chunks of crap look at that yeah look at that i mean he definitely got some nasty stuff there so there i got the biggest chunks let's get this sprayed off here Definitely ain't gonna hurt to have that cleaned out. Let's just say that. There we go, I look a little bit better. Okay, the brake fluid off of it now. You can see inside there, there's a spring. Okay, got that. If you notice, that matches that. So that cap thing is gonna go right back on there. There you go, you can kind of see it, maybe. Okay, there we go, put that back in like that. Let the spring behind it. And then here's this, which looks like it's got a little bit of a magnet on it. So let's go ahead and spray it off. There we go. Probably wouldn't hurt to have put a new seal in there, but I don't have one. I think we'll be all right. Let's go ahead and get that back in. Snug as turkey up. Snug it up my hand. There we go. Okay. I think that's good enough. Oil seal, look at that. I even had it marked. <laughs> that was nice. Well, we make it so that you can actually see that the next time. There we go, oil seal. Put a little bit of this oil on my chrome piece here. That way it don't rust. <laughs> this is the American made stuff that you won't find anymore. Thanks to Sears and Craftsman all selling out. It did its job and it's a nice case, honestly. I think I got 
next to nothing. It's a three quarter inch drive, SAE, inch to inch and a half, six point. Six point's key. So we're good there on that. Let's get some oil pumped into this. Let's push this back in. Let's see if we can get some other stuff cleaned up here. Definitely was not what I was looking to do here as far as making this nice mess here. It is what it is, bud. It had to be done, and guess what? It had crap in it. So was it plugged completely? No. But it's not tripping immediately every time either. So in my opinion, it's not a bad idea to have done what we did. And we're gonna get that oil level a little higher than what it was. I had a funnel, flexible funnel I could have brought that I, if I would have known I was gonna need it bought it to do generators and miscellaneous things you can form it to any shape you want what i could have should have done should have done was put that under there caught that oil into a bowl drained it off the side it's a green formable little thing it would have came all the way over to the side caught it all but like i said i'm not doing this kind of thing all the time and I hate carrying stuff around in the truck that I don't need very often because all it does is end up getting damaged or lost or something. Okay, so here's a regular wrench. This thing is not. I want to get it and it's going to round the edges off. These, because they have down squeezing pressure, will get it off without rounding the edges. Look at that did not round the edges at all. The traditional wrench would. I guarantee you my regular wrenches would have potentially done it. So that's why I use these. These have down pressure, crazy amounts of down pressure. Just to kind of show you, because I mean, it, it irks me because people just don't know about them. And then they think you're just hack jacking things around and it's not the case. A regular crimp connector watch this no problem at all completely flatten that thing out flat these are stupid down pressure I forget it's like 10 to 1 or I forget the exact amount look at that no problem at all you can't do that with a crescent wrench that's why these things are so awesome they're and don't get the junk ones from Harbor Freight they look identical I don't trust them. They, I don't know. These are expensive. I paid 55, they're up to 65 now, but thanks to all this inflation stuff that there is no free money. So if you're one of them people that think there is, you're the problem, so you can kiss my ass. Sorry about the snotty nose. It's kind of cool, kind of cool out here. We'll just pop that sucker in there like that. Brand new. Purged a little bit out. Go ahead and pump this in there. I'm gonna take her probably the halfway mark. That way we know we should have some leeway here. Maybe just the very bottom of that circle, inside circle. There we go. I think that puts us at a pretty decent spot. We'll set that so it doesn't get in the dirt. The last thing I want is that crap into the next system. Got some T, T, T plus two recto seal. Maybe everything's pretty clean here. We'll just overdo it and then we'll wipe it off. I can't, my brush is all coof bald and everything else. There we go. We'll just get the excess off the inside so it's not getting mixed in with the oil. Take the first couple threads off and then we'll wipe off the excess when we get there. My whole thing is I don't want to freaking leak. And I do have sockets, but like I said, I've not had any problems with these wrenches rounding edges off at all. And you can open and close them as you're going. So you're able to basically ratchet around it, loosen it up as you're doing your thing. Just clean that up so we don't look like we made a nasty old mess. There we go, look at that, no pipe dope anywhere. All right, so we'll go ahead and pull a quick back here on this thing. I'm not going for anything special. I just want all the air out of it. 
I did get an adapter so I can run a Milwaukee battery. Because I know eventually that battery is going to go bad. And they aren't cheap. There we go. Let's see how this little puppy likes this cold weather. Most everything we're going to be pulling out of here is refrigerant. We'll open up our gas ballast. There she goes. And hey, look at that, already pulling negative on that on that pressure gauge. And it's actually doing pretty quick for a quarter inch uh, hose. Look at that. That is pretty quick. I'm just buzzing along, look at her. Now, when you got these front seated, you are blocking the refrigerant system. You're blocking the refrigerant system up to the compressor, so you're open to the compressor here. Same thing here. You're you're stopping it you're you're cranking it in it's stopping it right there this valve then's on the other side it's going to go to the head of the compressor same thing here on that so yeah it's just refrigerant oil boiling off i think it sucks i don't have a ball valve on this well i guess i got the ball valve right here there we'll ball valve that off there she's staying in a negative i'll go ahead and shut my pump off we'll go ahead and open up that suction port on that valve that'll bring the refrigerant pressure back in from the system so we're gonna go ahead and take this all the way back out and then we'll back seat it uh that was front seated originally and then we will put the cap on so that'll close it back off right now we're just using the ball valve on the on the pump and then we gotta make sure we get the high side open too because the last thing we want is to try to fire this thing off with the discharge closed Makes for a bad day for the compressor. They don't like it. That's why the safety controls are on the head. For that very reason to protect it against accidents. I'm not gonna say this is everything. I got leakage around that stem there. I guess we can tighten that up a little bit. Yeah, it's already tight. Can't get on it very well. These things don't seal, so don't get on there and crank them with a freaking wrench. At this point, all they're doing is lucky if they keep the dirt out of it. They never did. If they were pla if they were metal, sure. So, like I said, we are at zero-ish. Couldn't have put this sucker away. Let's go ahead and flip it on and see what it does. Pressure should come up, and boom! Oil pressure went straight up fast and quick. See about 72-ish, 73-ish. It did not do that stutter thing that it was doing earlier. That that's what bothered me when I first kicked it on. It was doing this. And then it came up. Washing our oil there, we came down a little bit. It's clearing up. There we go. So went ahead and hooked up the gauges to the digitals. Super heat, uh, right at 49 degrees out here. So even though it's frosting up, it's not uh, not flooding back. Claims it's 36 degrees. That seems like it's not accurate. All right, so we'll go ahead and hook this on there. This is kind of nice for bigger pipes. And this thing is accurate usually within a half a degree, 0.3 degrees usually is what they got them rated at. Okay, it's 16 degrees according to that. That probe looks a little bit off. It says it's 36 degrees, so that's not accurate, huh? So if that's the case, 16 degrees and negative 15 that's 30 okay it's still we're still safe we've got 404a we're running negative 15 evaporator we have 15 there 15 let's just say 15 and 15 there's 30. for whatever reason that's that's having a fit with it it's not working very good definitely got some frost there on that thing it's under pretty good that one's under pretty good Hit the differential, 1.2, one degree, so it's not off, good. No no uh, restrictions on that. Ooh, look at my gauge here, it's not doing real good. I don't like that, let's shut that off before I destroy it. That usually is meaning that there's uh, oil pressure right up against, there's no buffer. Hopefully this thing will shut off real quick and I can disconnect. I'm not doing it while it's running. There you go. Still a zero. Good. 
sight glass. Got a little refrigerant in it, it looks like. Yeah, I wonder if we got something. Something's going on here. Not sure exactly what. Usually you get foaming like that, that's refrigerant. That usually is an indicator of a flood back. I hate this when you can't get a clear indication of what's going on. You have to check everything and, and to get it. Well, there's definitely a differential of eight degrees between the ingoing and outgoing side of that accumulator. So we're definitely uh, separating some liquid, which tells me that we could have some migration possibly when it shuts off. What's keeping that from migrating the liquid out? I, I would think it block heater there should be taking care of it, but not 100% certain there. Let's do true compressor superheat here. We'll unhook the other one. We've got saturated temperature of 16 below. Add those together. That would be almost 35, 40, 35 to 40 degrees. So while it's running, we're not getting any flood back. All right, so we've cycled it on and off multiple times. I chopped off some connectors here on my contactor, put on some insulated nice, you know, two wires under one instead of this two splitter deals. I've wiggled all my wires. I've got zero voltage drop across my new contactor from last year. Amperage is right in line. We're at 32.5 and it's 32.7 is what somebody had back, you know, a couple years ago. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, we had a little bit of, you know, a little bit of fluctuation in the oil there, but right now it don't look bad at all. I mean, I put it right at the very bottom of that circle bullseye, very bottom bullseye. So it's a little bit lower than that, but it's a lot higher than what it was before. And I was afraid that if we do have oil coming back, I'm wondering if it ain't something to do with that accumulator. Why did I have oil in that suction line like I did? That, you know, no matter what, since it's random, what do you do? Do you replace an accumulator? Do you replace the controller here for the oil pressure safety? They're not cheap. All those possibilities. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video and want to see more like it, if you would, hit the thumbs up button. We'll try this out and see how things go. At this point, I, I don't want to just replace parts to replace parts. Um, we've done what we can do. The pressures are fine. The uh, system cycles on and off fine. The solenoid seems to be holding. The superheat's okay. Uh, pretty much went through everything under the sun. So at this point, we're going to replace some expensive controls for no good reason, and I don't want to do that. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Until next time, later.